Hey, welcome back to the channel and to another DaVinci Resolve Quick Tips video. So today I want to talk about audio in your videos and the methods I use to clean up and enhance audio in my videos. So while video is indeed a visual medium and we pay a lot of attention to things like lighting and camera gear, getting your audio right is just as important and I would even say more important. People are much more likely to forgive a couple of minor imperfections with the visual aspects of your videos. But studies have shown that having bad audio in your videos is much more likely to drive viewers away. If I'm just slightly out of focus or frame badly on the screen, then your brain is not going to have too much of a problem with that. But if I'm invading your senses in your brain with bad audio, this elicits a much deeper reaction that your brain just can't ignore and it's going to detract from your enjoyment of the video. When I'm in my studio like now, I've got the Shure MV7 mic, which is a pretty decent microphone, but I still like to add a bit of processing to get the style that I want. Straight out of the mic, this is the sound profile I get using the auto preset with the natural setting. Then I use DaVinci Resolve to add a bit more depth to my voice and make it how I want it. In this video, we'll look at some basic equalizer settings that I use. We'll also look at different environments where there might be more echo or some background sound, and then stick around to the end for some YouTube specific advice that you really don't want to miss. So before we dive in, we're going to need a couple more samples, and that's where I get to play with my new toy, the DJI Mic 2 that arrived last week, and I haven't had a chance to test this out yet, so this is a perfect opportunity. So let's wire up and go mobile and head out of the studio to get some samples. So here I'm in a different kind of space. I'm actually in my kitchen, which is a lot bigger and a lot more echoey than the studio. And I'm just wired up with the DJI Mic 2 wireless mic. So this room is not as quiet as my studio, so we've got lots of big windows here, which lets in a little bit of noise from outside. But speaking of outside, let's just step out onto the terrace where things get a little bit more noisy. So here I'm out on a terrace. Right behind me is a main road. And right as I'm shooting, no cars are going past. There we go, we've got something going past behind now. So, great timing, because that's a big truck. So we'll see now if I can isolate my voice with the background noise going on here, how much the mics picks it up, and how we can use DaVinci Resolve to clean this up and get the best possible profile for my voice talking. So let's head back to the studio. So as I said, in this video, I'm going to show you my processes that I use to enhance my audio in DaVinci Resolve. Getting the audio settings right can be a bit of a black art. It's going to be depend a lot on your microphone, on your vocal type, and what sound profile that you want to end up with. So this is more of a general guide and just to show you the tools and how I use them to achieve the results that I want. So I've got a fairly deep male baritone type voice. If you've got a higher vocal pitch or if you're a female creator, then some of these settings will be a bit different and you just have to sort of play around and find whatever works for you. So let's jump in. I'll start off by showing you what I do with my standard studio setup and then we'll play around with some of the footage that we've just taken and I'll show you some of the tools I use to achieve the results that I like for my videos. So here I am in my DaVinci Resolve project. So I've got my audio imported here. I've got my original camera audio here, which is muted on this track. And I've synced that up with my microphone recording, which is down on the audio two track. So the first thing I like to do is to normalize my audio levels. So this just makes sure that the audio levels and all the clips are roughly the same. So I'm just going to select all of my clips and then right click and select normalize audio levels. And I tend to like to normalize at around minus five or minus 4.5 dB, depending. Click normalize on that. And then you can see the waveforms just subtly change there. And this means that everything is roughly the same volume. So that's a good starting place. So right now we've just got the audio straight out of the microphone and we have a quick listen to that. Hey, welcome back to the channel and to another DaVinci Resolve Quick Tips video. So that's not bad. Um, as I said, the audio that comes straight out the mic is good, but I like a little bit more depth and a bit more of a, uh, a richer sound. So that's what we're going to add first. I'm going to come over to the Far Lights tab, which is this little music icon down here. So I can see over on the left here, I've got all of my audio tracks. And the one that we're currently working on is this one, which has got my studio microphone output. And this is on audio two. And then over here, I can see the mixers for those different audio tracks. So the one I'm gonna be working on at the moment is gonna be audio two, this one here. So I can pick a point on this track and then just hit the space bar to play. To the channel and to another DaVinci. Generally, when I'm dealing with the audio coming from this microphone, I don't tend to need to do much to it. So the only thing I'll really do is go into my equalizer here. So under audio two, I'm going to double click the equalizer. 
While I'm in the settings, I can also hit the space bar and listen to things in real time. To resolve quick tips video. So what I like to do to give a little bit of extra richness is first I want to enable the band one by clicking on band one there. I also like to enable band six. And at any time we can just hit space bar to see what changes this has made. Hey, welcome back to the channel and to another DaVinci. And now the main thing I want to do is to add some depth and I do this with band four. And if I play and move band four up to find what's the worst sounding spot. To resolve quick tips video. So today I want to talk about audio in your videos and the methods I use to clean. So that's pretty bad around that point. So I just want to go the opposite from this point. I want to keep this vertical here and I just want to bring this down. Clean up and enhance audio in my videos. So while video is indeed a visual medium and we pay a lot, a lot of attention to, and that's given it a little bit more richness. Now what I also like to do is on the five or six bands here, I like just to bring these up a little bit. So I'm gonna play this while I do it. Things like lighting and camera gear. Getting your audio right is just as important and I would even say more important. People are much more likely to forgive. And that just adds a little bit of those higher frequencies. And I'm just gonna tweak this a sign a bit. Like I said, like I said, depending on your voice type and depending on what kind of profile, what kind of audio profile you want, you're gonna to have to tweak and just play around with these until you find something that works for you. A couple of minor imperfections with the visual aspects of your videos. But studies have shown that having bad audio in your videos is much more likely to drive viewers away. So there we go, I tend to take number four down a fair bit and then I want a little bit of a spike up here around three and then tail off to the top end around five and six. For me, for what I like and how I like my voice to sound in my videos, that's pretty much the profile that I use all the time. And now if I play this, I can toggle the equalizer on and off and we can hear the difference when it's active and not. So today I want to talk about audio in your videos and the methods I use to clean up and enhance audio in my videos. So while video is indeed a visual medium and we pay... So if you've got headphones on, then you can hopefully hear the difference between those two. And generally that's all I do to improve the quality when I'm dealing with this microphone. So now let's have a look at our second clip, which was taken in my kitchen where I'm wearing the DJI Mic 2, the, the, the wireless microphone. Let's just have a quick listen of that raw. Bigger and a lot more echoey than the studio. And I'm, I'm just gonna normalize the volume on this. I'm just wired up with the DGA mic two wireless mic. So, this so I can hear if, that my voice is, sounds very different coming from this microphone than the previous one. The kitchen, which is and there is a little bit of sort of hiss in the background because it's not as quiet as my studio. So I'm going to do a similar thing with this. We're going to head over to the Far Light page again, the Audio tab. And I can see now that the audio that we're working on here is on the Audio 3 track. So we're going to head over here on the right to Audio 3. And I'm just going to give a, I'm just going to play that quickly. It's a lot bigger and a lot more echoey than the studio. So the first thing I'm going to do is just add a denoiser. It's not going to make a huge amount of difference, but it will just take the edge off. So I'm going to click under effects here. I'm going to click the plus symbol, head down to restoration. And then under restoration, I'm going to select noise reduction. And then I can just hit space bar and see how that sounds. I'm just wired up with the DGA mic 2 wireless mic. So this room is not as quiet as my studio, so we've got lots of big windows here, which lets in a little bit of noise from outside. But speaking of outside, let's just step out onto the terrace where things get a little bit more noisy. This room is not as quiet as my so here in noise reduction, I get the option of setting things manually here and I can tweak the noise reduction levels. DaVinci Resolve also has this auto speech mode, which will try and detect which frequencies are noise and what to remove and try and get things around your voice. So I'm gonna play this first and then select auto speech mode and see what the difference is. A studio, so we've got lots of big windows here, which lets in a little bit of noise from outside. But speaking of outside, let's just step out onto the terrace. So that's, Fine for now, I might come back and tweak that later. Here I'm in a different kind of space. And I'm gonna do what I did before as well as I'm gonna go in my audio three track, I'm gonna select the equalizer and I'm gonna do a very similar thing to what I did before. We're gonna enable band ones and six. And I'm just gonna let this play while I tweak with this. 
So I'm actually in my kitchen, which is a lot bigger and a lot more echoey than the studio. And I'm just wired up with the DJA Mic 2 wireless mic. So this room is not as quiet as my studio, so we've got lots of big windows here, which lets in a little bit of noise from outside. But speaking of outside, let's just step out onto the terrace where things get a little bit more noisy. I'm just wired up with the DJA Mic 2 wireless mic. So this room is not as quiet as my studio. So now I can listen to this with and without the equalizer again. I'm just wired up with the DJA Mic 2 wireless mic. So this room is not as quiet as my studio, so we've got lots of big windows here. Which... So that seems to have added a bit more depth. So now I'm going to show you another tool that DaVinci Resolve has to clean up your audio. I don't always use this unless it's a, a fairly excessive uh, enhancement that I want to do. So we're going to look at the footage I took from outside. And if I play this just plain, I think it was around here. So great timing because that's a big truck. So we'll. So there we've seen that truck go past and you can definitely hear that in the audio. It's quite distracting. Now, I don't want to completely remove it because by trying to completely remove that, not only am I going to distort my own voice a bit more, but it's also going to seem a little unrealistic. I think having no background noise at all can just seem like it's over edited, but I definitely want to tone that down quite a lot. So we're going to go back over into Farlight now. And we're now operating on audio track four. So I'm going to move over to four. And up here at the top, we've got track effects and we've got this voice isolation button here. And we're just going to see what happens. I'm going to go back to before the truck comes past. And we're going to play that. And I'm going to first going to play it without that option switched on. Great timing because that's a big truck. There we go. And now we're just going to click this voice isolation here. Enable that. And now we're going to play that through again. Great timing because that's a big truck. So we'll see now if I can isolate my voice with... So that's done a really good job of isolating my voice. It's pretty much isolated everything but my voice. I can notice that there's a bit of distortion in my vocal pattern. And that's because of so much of this audio has been removed. Let's just hear that again. Great timing because that's a big truck. So I think this is going to sound better if we can hear just a little bit of the traffic in the background, but it's not distracting from my voice and what I'm saying. So let's go back there again. I'm going to hover over this voice isolation and I can click the adjustments button. So by default, we can see this is all the way up to max. And I'm going to, as I play this clip, I'm going to bring the amount down. So great timing because that's a big truck. That sounds a lot better. You can just hear the truck in the background, but it's not distracting and it makes the whole scene a little bit more real sounding. Great timing because that's a big truck. So we'll see. So we're going to stick with that voice isolation. And as we did before, we're also going to come into the equalizer and just add a little bit of depth to my voice. Probably not as much as we did for the interior ones. So we'll see now if I can isolate my voice with the background noise going on. I'm going to pull band one back a little bit here so we're not taking out too much of those low frequencies. So we'll see now if I can isolate my voice with the background noise going on here, how much the mics picks it up and great timing because that's a big. And now I'm happy with that. So now we've got my voice is a bit richer. We've got the sound of the traffic is a lot lower behind us. Let's just take another listen. Great timing because that's a big truck. So we'll see now if I can isolate my voice with the background noise. So there you have it. There's the main things I do to enhance the audio quality levels for my videos. There's one extra thing that I need to do before I ship my videos to YouTube, and that's set the loudness level. Without getting into all the audiophile technicalities, the loudness level is set using a meter called LUFS or L-U-F-S. Different platforms have different requirements for the loudness level of the videos. For YouTube, we need to be aiming for about minus 14 LUFS. So the reason this is important is if you upload an especially loud video onto YouTube, YouTube cares about the ears of their viewers, so they're going to reduce that sound for you, probably not in the best way. But if you upload a quiet video that's not loud enough, then YouTube is not going to amplify that. And the last thing you want is your video to come across as very quiet and nobody can hear what you're saying and people have to adjust the volume. So we want the volume to be the same as the previous video that they were watching on YouTube. So the way we get this minus 14 LUFS is pretty easy. I'll just show you that now. So we're going to continue doing this over in the Far Light tab. And I'm going to use my original Audio 2 track for now. And we're going to be focusing on this area up here, which we haven't looked at so far. So on the right hand side, we've got all the meters for all the various audio tracks. And these are sort of combined into this area up here, which is measuring the output across all of our tracks. 
The numbers here are representative of LUFS. And what we're going to do is click the three dots here and we want to select lock metering to transport. We want to also select absolute scale and we want to select BS1774, which is the second option currently here. And I'm going to hit reset and start on this meter. So now we're just going to start playing our audio and see what we get here. So today I want to talk about audio in your videos and the methods I use to clean up and enhance audio in my videos. So as we're playing here, what we've got is our control room here, and this is telling us our top peak. So, so far our top peak is only minus 10 decibels. So if this, as long as this stays below minus one, then we're not going to be at risk of clipping. Over here on the right, we can see the Luft's metering. The key number we want to look for here is this integrated down here. And this is currently showing us that the integrated Luft's, so the, the loudness of this video is minus 23.4. Now, ideally for YouTube, we want this to be minus 14. So the trick here is to get our integrated here to be as close to minus 14 as possible, which means we need to make it louder. But we want to do that without our top peak here going above one, so we're not risking clipping our audio. So normally the way I do this, I go into the track. So in this case, we're dealing with audio two and select the dynamics and double click on that and enable compressor. And I want to make sure that I can still see this window at the top here. At any time, if I make any changes, I can just reset this and start it again. And then when I click play. So while video is indeed a visual medium and we pay a lot of attention to things like. So by the looks of it, we're, we're quite a way out. We need to be a good sort of six, seven decibels higher. And it looks like we have the clearance for that. So right now I'm going to take the makeup here and I'm going to push it up. We're just going to start with about five and see what happens. I'm going to reset and start. Like lighting and camera gear. Getting your audio right is just as important and I would even say more important. So here we're looking good. We're still not clipping. We're still like minus 5.3 and 18. So I think we should just keep going a little bit with this. But I'm also bring the, I'm going to bring the threshold of the compressor just down a very slightly bit. I'm going to push this up to about nine, nine and a half and play that again. Reset. People are much more likely to forgive a couple of minor imperfections with the visual aspects of your videos, but studies have shown that having bad audio in your videos is much more likely to drive viewers away. If I'm just slightly out of focus or frame badly on the screen, then your brain is not going to have too much of a problem with that. But if I'm invading... So now we've got the integrated at minus 14.7. Don't worry if you can't get it exactly on 14. You don't want to risk clipping your audio just to hit that magic number. Um, you can upload to YouTube with minus 15. It's not going to make a huge amount of difference. I'm going to dial this down a tiny bit because we're getting a bit close to our clipping point and try that again. Feeding your senses in your brain with bad audio. This elicits a much deeper reaction that your brain just can't ignore and it's going to detract from your enjoyment of the video. We can literally just go a tiny bit higher. Yeah. When I'm in my studio like now, I've got the Shaw MV7 mic, which is a pretty... So that's bouncing between 14 and 15, which is normally fine. And I can see that in my control room here, I'm not going over and uh, clipping the audio. Integrated is stuck at around 14, 15. So that's going to be a good level to upload to YouTube. So that's my general process for handling audio in DaVinci Resolve for YouTube. One thing I'd just like to mention is that I've just started a free creators newsletter. You'll find the link in the description. So sign up to receive regular content around video creation, social media, digital marketing. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider hitting the like button. It really does help. And consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this. Until the next time, keep making videos.